And we're now joined by Mia Hanek, who is the founding executive director of the Natural World Museum, which is a San Francisco-based nonprofit organization which presents art through innovative programs to inspire and engage the public in environmental awareness and action. Yes, I took that from mm -hmm. your website. You know, it took me a while. I, I spent time roaming through your website yes. and learning about you, and we're delighted to have you with us. And Thank still you. could not quite get an angle what it is you're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you're trying to do here. Sure. The Natural World Museum is essentially what we call a mobile and global organization. Although we're based here in San Francisco, we travel the world and provide exhibitions that kind of stimulate awareness and action about certain environmental topics. And by being mobile, we're able to reach broader and more diverse audiences. If, if we just had a building here in San Francisco, mm -hmm. we have to expect, oh, you know, everyone's going to come here. Uh, visit the museum and all like of a sudden Like they visit the cable yeah. cars and they go <laughs> exactly. to Quake Tower and they go and Gate Bridge. That's not what right. you want to have happen. But, uh, you know, the environmental messages are urgent. And so for us, by being able to bring this to cities around the world, mm -hmm. including developing countries, we have an opportunity to reach um, the masses. So what you're, what you're, when you say it, what you're bringing, mm -hmm. tell us about what you're bringing. Sure. What are these things that you're bringing? I know one of them is mm -hmm. this glass booth that had a tree inside it. Yes. <laughs> Described. That was in Kenya, too, wasn't it? Yes. You, that, got, and around the world, it's been exhibited. Exactly. Let's take that. Sure. Uh, what's that all about? Sure. Well, um, the bottom line is the artwork that is curated around a specific topic has to do with our partnership with the United Nations Environment Program. Mm -hmm. Because if you're familiar, each year um, the UN has what they call World Environment Day, mm -hmm. which is commemorated on June 5th of each year and they identify a certain theme and topic. And so our job is to curate artwork that helps people um, connect with that and you know, generates dialogue about certain things from different perspectives. And have you done that? Yes. And, and uh, what, now this, this is the one that was featured in one of those magazines that, that featured you, and I think it was a fundraising magazine. Sure. F because you're tireless in, mm -hmm. in your ability to get things done, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, the yeah. person that I was described there, I mean, you s seem to be different than the person that's here, but I'm sure <laughs> that when you get started, you don't give up. You'll right. work through the night, week oh, after yeah. week, to yeah. get the money that's necessary to do what you want to do here. Exactly. Am I right? You're right. It's 24-7, day after day, week after week, year after year, and uh, we have an incredible team that is based, here? you know, we have, uh, our core team is in San Francisco, and we have, um, other members of the museum that are based worldwide and so, so you believe yeah. then you if I understand you mm -hmm. believe that artists and their work can actually contribute to change in behavior mm -hmm. that can help the environment exactly I mean on a daily basis we're faced with scientific facts um, a lot of our connection with the environment is through conservation groups and um, what, what we're doing with the art is, you know, essentially art evokes emotion. Mm -hmm. And evo emotion is what results in some type of action. All right, let's take one. Let, let okay. To get a perspective, let's take Al Gore's movie. Oh, yeah. Would you call that art? That's a documentary, uh, but right. I would see, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I would think you might have a problem with that because it hammers mm -hmm. people over the head with the facts. Sure. You're trying to use, uh, as we get closer to trying to understand what you're doing here, mm -hmm. You like to be more subtle about what it is that art, what the artist is creating. Right. You don't hammer people over the head with, right. here are the facts, Sure. and, in, and I'm going to endear fear right. on you. Well, essentially, with Al Gore's presentation, which incidentally, um, during World Environment Day 2005, mm -hmm. at our exhibition that was in San Francisco, Al Gore presented the um, presentation oh. on global warming there, so that so th it's been you know an interesting. So, so he introduced it yes. before the public had gotten it, mm -hmm. and it, it was a very high impact. I mean, people in the audience had tears and just looks of shock and awe on their face. However, um, I would consider that almost more of a fear-based approach. Yes, you know, that's what it, I was getting it's at. It's boom, you know, you see a picture of a glacier and then it's gone, mm -hmm. and, and you know, ah, what are we doing to this planet? However, um, what we do with our, with our exhibits is we call it inspiration-based approach because art inspires, and that's Give me an example mm -hmm. of, of what you consider to be several inspirational art pieces that you 
we're responsible for introducing either here or elsewhere. What, give, describe them. Sure. Well, going back to the tree installation that you had mentioned. Yeah, that, describe that. Um, that was really interesting because um, when we launched the Art for the Environment initiative at the UNEP headquarters in Nairobi, um, we installed this piece and it's a 12 foot by 12 foot cube that actually had a living tree on a life support system. And so the, the point, and this was by artist J.C. Didier, and um, you know, the Natural World Museum commissioned this piece and installed it there. And the point was, you know, gathering people around to look at this tree and realize if we don't create change today, this is what's going to be left. You know, trees, you know, the last remaining um, forces of nature have to be kept alive by... So, and, the, and, and so people, and there was a television in there, wasn't there? Yes, it, well, it, it had, um, you know, uh, the yeah. EKG. <laughs> right, right, oh, I see, it was a monitor system. Yeah. So, the impression you got from people who saw the exhibit is what? That, that, that they were moved, maybe even moved more yeah. than an Al Gore exactly. uh, or Michael Moore type well, film. Well, interestingly enough, our honorary guest um, at the opening of that installation was uh, Wangari Mathai, who's the Nobel Peace Prize recipient of 2004 and for her work with the Green Belt Movement and planting trees. Mm -hmm. So um, she was just really inspired about our ability to, you know, create a work of art that speaks about this cause and, and this situation. And, um, you know, so even to impact someone like that. Who already is there. Exactly. Now yeah. you have, and I try to get there, there's sure. an event going on right now that people can go and see until the end of June or, or yes, there is in City Hall. Exactly. We have an exhibition. Because we're based in San Francisco, we like to keep our roots mm -hmm. here. So we have a exhibition called Making the Choice mm -hmm. and Bringing Forth an Environmental Renaissance. And it's an exhibition at San Francisco City Hall that runs through uh, June 15th. And essentially that focuses on seven environmental topics such as waste reduction, energy, water, and so forth. But the interesting thing is um, the mayor of San Francisco said, well, you know, what could we do to present a situation where we help the people of San Francisco understand how am I impacting species and habitats on the other side of the planet? Because there's a disconnection. And so with artists coming together to talk about this, um, you know, it, it provides a new lens. And the interesting thing is we have one object mm -hmm. per category that everyone uses on a daily basis, such as a cell phone or a water bottle. Mm -hmm. And, and, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we demonstrate how does this impact. Oh, it's th that's you know, part of the exhibit. Yes. You also have a seminar going on through, is mm -hmm. it the Commonwealth Club? Exactly. You're pairing artists with scientists? And editors. And editors. Yes, so that you, you're, you look at one of these seven environmental topics through three different lenses. At the same event. At the same event. Okay, now we, uh, yeah, look, I, I, I think it's remarkable what mm -hmm. you're doing. And uh, people don't realize this, but you know, you're 30 something, right. but you've been to what, in 40 countries? Yes. Uh, you've been, uh, what makes you do this? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and you're, you're not even revealing, I think, how passionate you are about mm -hmm. this whole nexus between art and in the environment mm -hmm. and saving the environment. Right. What made you, what, where do you tra <laughs> trace this thing? Sure. Um, well, my professional and academic background are in the arts and museum industry, and um, my personal passion is obviously with the environment. Um, and by traveling to all of these countries, which most of the times is back roads and you know the mm -hmm. rustic, mm -hmm. rustic mm -hmm. side of travel, and um, you know just seeing firsthand the. But you were trained, and you yeah. got your master's degree in museum. Museum management, management and exhibition design. So something happened to you, because I mean, mm -hmm. even though I don't think you said I'm going to go get that master's degree so I can do a museum right. or natural. What happened to you? Did something specifically? Sure. Well, yeah, after, after I completed that, I, I realized, well, you know, I don't necessarily want to just work in a museum. And I, I just always had more of a progressive vision. And I said, there has to be a way to merge, you know, this cultural world with the environmental world. And so by creating an institution that does travel and mm -hmm. that does connect both worlds under one roof, um, it was, it was just an amazing opportunity, and I, I mean, certain experiences, you know, that triggered just this total um, commitment. commitment, and my, my path is, I would say, probably when I was in Madagascar, 
and that was maybe about 10 years ago and I you know I travel as a solo woman and it, which is always interesting when you go to um, certain countries mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um, being there and just realizing you know what was once a totally lush tropical forest is now almost a complete barren desert with just you know hmm. just the rim remaining um, I said this is not possible you know I threw my TV out the window I said that's it you know I am using every minute of my time on this new mission. how did you wind up though at Madagascar in the first place <laughs> that's a whole okay. other story so but in other words you didn't go there to, to on an eco tour no I do yeah you I do ad ad adventure travel I just kind of see you know what what is uh yeah, but you didn't go there for environmental right? reasons to f find environmental deprivation you were there for another reason but mm -hmm. it it hit you right it just it, w it was like an obscure far off place and uh, you know I just wanted to I'm really into cultures and exploring the different cultures and while I was exploring the cultures I was faced with this massive environmental devastation you know the only one thing I, I would bring up and, mm -hmm. and it, it, it it's part of my my point of view is sure. that you had in the 60s 70s and 80s a lot of artists and organizations working on helping humanity by mm -hmm. e through economic development right and they portray the poverty of uh, 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 as we portray now in Dafur sure. elsewhere and part of that was you know let's cut down the rainforest let's create industry so you have this battle here of two passions mm -hmm. one of poverty and and so on and economic well-being mm -hmm. versus what uh, is the passion of saving the planet yeah. and both of them have used art right how do you, in your own mind, how do you uh, uh, bring those two needs together? Sure. Well, interestingly enough, the, the exhibition that we have coming up, um, which is launching on June 5th at the Nobel Peace Center in Where's Oslo, it? Norway, okay. um, that is called Envisioning Change, Melting Ice, a Hot Topic. And um, it's artists exploring um, global climate change from various perspectives, from the poles to the Andes to the Arctic, but what does melting ice mean? It, it has economic impacts, mm -hmm. social impacts, you know, rivers are drying up, um, so, and, and it also impacts industries and, and sustainable solutions. So how, how is it, you know, yeah. and, and these artists, you know, come up with absolutely amazing ways to interpret it. For example, um, one artist, Lucy Orda, she has a major installation that is a canoe with a life support system that has water, you know, that processes water because when the ocean levels are rising mm -hmm. and we're all going to be rowing around on our boats mm -hmm. <laughs> and trying to purify the water um, on the see. boat, you know, it's just like these. And she's, she's uh, done that? It's yes. Oils or acrylics or? or no, it's an it's a actual, actual oh. insta ah. sculptural installation with sound. Wow. And so Will it's we just be able phenomenal. To see that, uh, if you come visit us okay. at the Nobel Peace Prize. But you're going to continue to work here out of San Francisco and, and because you believe in San Francisco's commitment. Exactly. I, I think San Francisco is an amazing place to call home for this organization. And, well, um, and yeah. we, I, we hope that the, that the Natural World Museum will become a fixture, not just like Koi Tower, but right. fulfill your dreams. Thanks for being with us. Thank Rina. you. And thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. Visit our website at www dot sf unscripted dot com